Notice this. What is the difference between the tares and the wheat? They look the same. They couldn't tell the difference. They look the same. You can see that from the story. The tares and the wheat look the same. The difference is that the wheat bears seed and has fruit, and the tares do not. 1341. Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Save my life, Dr. Steve. What did he say? <laughs> Give me an offering envelope. <laughs> okay, I knew it was in Matthew 13. Couldn't believe it disappeared like that. Okay. Let's go back to verse 38. The field is the word of God. The good seed are the sons of the kingdom, and the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. You got it? He's talking about the end of the age. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in fire, so it'll be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness will cast them into the furnace of fire. You see, how is this going to happen? I believe the Antichrist is going to offer the mark of the beast. 666, Revelation 13, Revelation 14, Revelation 17. And those believers who are passive Christians will take them on. Will take them on. We have got to transition from being passive to active believers. We've got to be on fire for the Lord, family. He's gathering out of his kingdom all those who offend and who are lawless and do not produce after their own kind. We've got to become active. The best way you can become active is become a soul winner. All right. So you can see that wasn't part of my message today. I got messed up there. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Simon. All right, moving right along with our study now for today. To enter the holy place in Solomon's temple, they had to give thanks and praise to God. Over here you can see the priest standing there with his hands raised, about to go into the holy place. And uh, he is giving thanks to God for all God is. For all God is. When he was outside the gate to the courtyard, he gave thanks to God for all God has done for him. Now he's giving thanks to God for all God is. And here he is starting to participate with the soul realm, with the soul realm as he goes in, okay? Not just the body. So, as he goes in here, now we see in here, in the temple, we see the candlesticks over there. We have 10 candlesticks in Solomon's temple. Can we put a candlestick up on the screen? There's a candlestick. It's made out of one piece of gold. One piece of gold, not many pieces, one. One piece of gold, beaten and shaped like that with seven flames. On top of each arm is a little cup of gold and inside each cup is olive oil and that burns 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Seven days a week. Now let's go back to the temple. Now you see that candlestick represents the mind of man, the mind of man, all right? There are three pieces of furniture here. That represents the mind of man. And on top of the candle, we have fire. And fire represents the Holy Spirit. And so does oil represent the Holy Spirit. As we can see in Matthew 3.18, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John the Baptist said that. Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So this fire represents the Holy Spirit. Oil represents the Holy Spirit as well. 
in 1 Samuel 16, verse 13, we learn that when Samuel came to anoint David with olive oil, that the Spirit of God came upon David mightily from that day forward at the age of 17. So the oil and the fire represent the Holy Spirit at the top of the candle. And there are um, 70 flames, 70 flames. 10 candlesticks, seven on each, 70 flames. Those 70 flames represent the 70 disciples that Jesus sent out in the dark world, into darkness to bring the light of God to the dark world. It also represents seven fires, represent the seven church ages. The seven church ages where God used the church to bring light into the dark world. Now, the bread represents two things. The bread on this table here, there are one, two, three, four, five, ten tables of bread. Each table had 12 loaves of bread on it. Let's have a look at that. Table of showbread, there it is. With 12 pieces of bread there. All right, on the table of showbread. Let's go back to Solomon's temple. Now, the bread represents two things. It represents the mind, sorry, the wool of man. The mind is the candle. It represents the wool of man. And just like flour or like this grain, the grain is ground into flour to make bread. So God wants us to submit our wool to Him, to grind our wool to a place where we become like Jesus and say, not my will be done, but thy will be done. All right? So the bread represents the wool of man. It also represents the Word of God. The bread represents the Word of God because Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we see then that the bread also represents the Word of God, right? Now you notice that the candlestick is slightly raised above the table of showbread. The table of showbread is slightly lower than the candlestick. That's for a very important reason, because the light will shine down from the fire onto the candlestick and then onto the bread. That's very important. There were no doors or windows in that room, no lamps in that room. The only thing that was lit in that room were the candlesticks. So if the candlesticks were off, the priest could not find the bread to eat it. All right? Now, since the flame and the oil represent the Holy Spirit in manifestation, then we see it's necessary for the fire to fall on the candlestick first, which represents the mind. And with the Holy Spirit anointing the mind, we're able then to grasp the Word of God. As the light falls on the bread, on the Word, when you read the Bible, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit needs to anoint our mind and the Word so we can understand it. Without the Holy Spirit, you would not understand the Bible. Thank you for those three amens. I'll give you a scripture for that. John 16, 12. Jesus said, there are many things I want to tell you, but you cannot bear them now or understand them now. Why? Because he's talking to dead men spiritually. No one was born of the Spirit of God until Jesus died on the cross. Their spirits were not alive unto God. The Spirit of God was not in their heart. So he said, there's many things I want to tell you, but you won't understand them. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, 
verse 13, John 16, 13, He will guide you into all truth. And He will tell you things to come. Now we know when in the new covenant, the Spirit of God came down on the day of Pentecost. We know that Jesus before that breathed on His disciples and they were all born of the Spirit of God. But they got full of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Now from that day on, they were, under, they were able to understand spiritual things. That's when we get the letters of Paul, Peter, James and John, all written to men and women who are born of the Spirit of God, who are alive unto God. The Spirit of God is in their spirit. The moment we ask Jesus to come into our heart and give our life to Him, we are born of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit enters into our spirit and we are alive unto God and are able to understand the truths of God's Word by the teacher, the Holy Spirit in us. Thank you for watching Dr. Theo's YouTube channel. We will continue to offer encouraging and life-changing highlights from Dr. Theo's past, present and future series and messages. Please take the time to like and share the videos. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.